Path of Night is an actual play Vampire the Masquerade podcast set in the world of darkness. We're all friends, we're here to have fun, but our story can include graphic violence, drug use, sexual content, and other mature themes. Content warnings can be found in the show notes. We talk at our table about safety, comfort, and consent, both as players and storytellers. We know what to expect, we're all excited to be here, and we want you to feel the same. So listener discretion is advised. Now, let's walk the path of night. Last time, on Path of Night. Neil and Wynne talked about the horror of the negotiation with Pendragon, and Wynne's current death wish. Miles thwarted a stake and bake plot to kidnap Eden, and commanded one of the pack to spy on the Sabbat for the quarry. Miles, Britta, and Eden danced together, attempting to salvage some hope. Neil, it's been an awkward night. In some ways, intriguing. In other ways, deeply frightening. You slipped away from the throng and find your way more towards the entrance to the rave. What do you do? After everything that's happened tonight and then going to chase down wind to have that rooftop conversation, looking around, seeing... His other coterie mates dancing on the dance floor inside. Neil's actually thinking about a lot of that sort of awkward and places life and wants to call Nara. But because she's actually in the city now, he doesn't want to use the the like dead drop line that they used to send little messages to each other on. He wants to actually call her. And so he's sort of selfishly looking for Johnny because uh, he's been made aware that Johnny, uh, as the Seneschal, has uh, one of the new Asimites in the city is working for him or with him. And he knows that, you know, Miles used to have like uh, the contact information for everybody. So he's just looking for Johnny. And he also kind of wants to check in on Johnny because there's been a fucking lot. Like, if it's been a lot for me, it's probably been a lot for him. So I'm probably going to look around. If I don't see him inside, probably going to look outside where everybody goes to gather to smoke. Just assuming he might be out there. When you go outside to where people are smoking, you are met with this cloud of nicotine and actually takes a moment to step through it, the haze, and actually see what's going on out there. And in this sea of poorly parked cars, (laughs) you find two individuals who have drawn the attention of the crowd. One of them smoking a cigarette, running his fingers through greasy hair and pacing back and forth. And the other one is Johnny. Johnny, you're outside. Weathers' SUV is not 10 feet away from you. Your boy, he's smoking cigarettes. My cigarettes. Your cigarettes. (laughs) He'll pay you back, though. He's good for it. And he's rambling. Johnny, this fuck. He has no respect. Blue Heart is supposed to be about honor, are they not? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Warrior poets, good men, not bullshit blue blood princes. Johnny, Johnny put, lifts up a hand and then <laughs> jabs Kabir in the chest. With he a, winces with a ever so slightly. <laughs> Blue Heart are about honor. Why the fuck do you think I'm here? As, as he emphasizes his point with a baseball bat that Johnny has... Somehow procured. I imagine he it's looks, not hard to break. <laughs> <laughs> he looks up at Johnny, the MC, with genuine hope in his eyes. Forgive me, brother. I was wrong. And whatever you have, as far as beef goes with Weathers, he is an honorable man, and he is going to stomp us into the pavement and put us in the, into uh, torpor. I hope you know that. 
I think we have a chance. No? Johnny kind of like gives him a like, we're fucked, dude. Kind of look. <laughs> we're still gonna we're gonna break this thing. It's gonna be fucking axles by the time we're done. But I just want you to know that we're fucked. <laughs> Neil is walking up to the two of them, and at Johnny's words, like this dude's gonna fucking torpor us. Just freezes. Like, wait, what am I walking into right here? This is not where I expected to be. Neil, what are you doing here? You don't uh, like you were expecting to be here. I was well. <laughs> I was I was looking for you. I was gonna check in to see you're okay, but you 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 look out. Oh, I'd probably get going if I were you. Otherwise, you're gonna be accessory. To, what are you What are you guys doing? Johnny looks at Kabir. We're gonna fuck his car up. Why? Johnny, Cause fuck him. Why? <laughs> he doesn't. Oh understand. wait, no, no, no. Hold on, I do. Johnny kind of like heaves a sigh. All right. And, no, wait. Hold on. Before this, whatever you're gonna do, before it gets started, do you? You, you know, the, between him saying "all right" and then you saying "wait," Johnny was already like celerity up in like the, the <laughs> gonna smash it pose, but stops hearing you say like "wait, wait, wait." Do you, Do you have Do you have any like current phone numbers for any of the Asmites in the city? Specifically, Nora's phone number, but like. You know, I know you've got, like, a, an assistant now. Maybe she's got... You're the Seneschal. I just... Wait, I'm, I'm sorry. What are you asking? If you've got... Do, do you have my girlfriend's phone number? Currently? Or any way for me to get that right now? I, I could just go look, but, like, you're the Seneschal, and her... Please like, do not break into my office. Friend is... Okay, I have well, some then, contact have information the... for, for the uh, for the Asimites. Uh He kind of, like, looks, like, up and to the left, like, trying to, like, figure out whether he's got... Anything for Nara? Yeah. I I think I've got Nara's number. Is it in your phone or is it? What? You can store numbers. You have a cell phone now. You can yeah. store numbers in the phone. Yeah, but how many can I store? Because I've already got like nine. four in there. Well, probably more than that, but any more than nine gets confusing. All right. Well, I'm, I'm pretty close to my limit, so I can't just be putting random asimites, especially not your girlfriend's number in my phone. Okay. Well, do, do you have it? Do you know it offhand, or do I have to wait? No, it's fine I don't if know I have to it wait. offhand. Okay. I'm just. At what, what kind of psycho just like memorizes all those numbers like that? Uh, Neil looks a little crestfallen at the idea that all the like if it was her house numbers. number, maybe, but we don't have house numbers anymore. Well, that's fair. Uh. It's it's fine. This this can I, I suppose this can wait. It what can are, wait? Okay. See, so he, he just looks between the two of them. Neil, are you in? Why would I be in? Grab in one year. of those spray cans. Neil just reflexively bends down and picks up a spray <laughs> can. Why? I don't know where to spray some shit on the car. Oh God. Uh, I don't I don't have beef with Weathers. Kabir, you're the artistic one. Help him figure out something to put on the side of this thing. Th this is... Hey, man, a it's... A dick or something, I don't know. It's not my... <laughs> Throw a big, heady dick. Johnny, uh... Wind's Johnny... already mad at me. <laughs> Johnny puts out a fist to uh, Kabir. He fucking bumps his comparatively diminutive fist against... The fist Johnny's goes over towards fist. Neil. Lex, before bumping the fist or doing anything with Johnny, Neil looks around... Are any of the Bruja who, like, within the last hour thought I was kind of cool in this crowd? <laughs> well, here's Because that's going to make a big fucking difference about my name. I need a courage roll at difficulty <laughs> eight for me to leave Johnny hanging. That, I was going to say, fuck the other, the other Bruja. You got, you're going to leave me hanging in front of Bruja? Oh, God. I got a baseball bat in my hands, my man. <laughs> you better have We're bumping one way or another. <laughs> <laughs> you right. I rolled a one and a two. <laughs> yeah, if that's a fucking botch. Neil crumbles under the weight of peer pressure. <laughs> <laughs> the fist goes out, and it's it's so tentative, but he can't help himself from doing it. And the fist with the fucking spray can goes out. Let's do this. Oh. And Johnny starts going to work on Weathers' truck with a fucking baseball bat. All right. Give me a strength plus athletics roll. Uh, both of you. How bad do you want Rob to botch this session, man? <laughs> Wait, um, strength plus athletics to spray paint the car? I suppose it could be crafts. Yeah, dex crafts. I'll, I'll take a dex crafts. Okay, we'll do the same pool, so it doesn't matter. Do I, uh, <laughs> do I get a bonus from the baseball bat? Uh, plus two dice. Excellent. It's going to shatter immediately because I'm going to use a, blood, a point of blood to uh, get extra successes <laughs> from potents. Done. 
Uh, hey, Lex, failing a courage check that much. Uh, I'm going to mask him a thousand faces so I don't look like me. Okay. What? Are you What's sure? Di- difficulty here, Lex? <laughs> Are you sure Difficulty about six? Your difficulty is six. Cool. I botched again. <laughs> <laughs> Neil, like, looks at Johnny as he does his thing. I was like, all right, man, yeah. And you see his form start to shimmer a little bit, so he just looks like one of the generic bruja for, like, a half a second before he nervously puts the spray paint up, holds it down in the wrong way, so it sprays directly into his own face, <laughs> dropping the illusion immediately. So now it's just a, a paint-covered fucking Neil. <sighs> but because that's a double bless two fucking botches in a row in for a penny, I, like, as he just goes, Oh, God, my eyes! And as he turns, does spray across the car. Johnny gets ten successes to mess this car up. <laughs> Describe how you execute the vehicle. <laughs> Street Fighter style. The uh, the first swing pretty much takes off the front end. Uh, he cleaves through the the uh, one headlight, through the grill, into and out the other headlight. Pretty much letting the uh, the bumper fall down to the ground. The whole chassis shakes in a way reminiscent of a, of a uh, 16-bit video game. The bat does not survive the initial swing. And Johnny just balls up his fists and just starts going to work on the, the whole thing as he basically kind of does a whole tour around the vehicle. Windows are smashed. Doors are pulled off. Tires are punctured. This thing is just a pile of wreckage by the time Johnny makes a full rotation. Neil is, like, desperately trying to rub, like, wipe red paint out of his face. And then, like, leaning against the car. So even though he's not even trying to spray paint anymore, like, accidentally leaving fucking red handprints with his perfect fucking handprint all over the car. Kabir will actually help and try to wipe Neil's eyes before turning his attention to the rims and axle of what remains of the SUV, kicking it and spitting on it and not really accomplishing things <laughs> in the way that Johnny does, but it is it is equally demoralizing. And the reason you know this is because on a soft breeze, Neil, you catch a whiff of the scent of a cigar. Neil fucking freezes. Uh, g- guys? Uh, Johnny spends blood to put in stamina. <laughs> <laughs> guys, um, I think, I think Weathers has got the message, is getting the message. Yup. As you look around, the three of you, amigos, <laughs> see Weathers, who has a, tense expression on his face. He has his car keys in his hand, and very slowly, as if beginning to understand the circumstance he finds himself in, (laughs) he begins to put the key back in his pocket. (laughs) God, I hope he rolls okay on (laughs) self-control. Kinda don't. It's gonna be way funnier. Yeah, we know what you want. Johnny leans into Kabir. Grabs Kabir by the lapel and like smiles at him and goes, If I gotta die tonight, I'm glad it's next to my brother. And like gives him like a harsh pat on the on the shoulder and will spend a point of willpower to extend Iron Heart to uh Kabir. He unabashedly hugs Johnny as if this was your final moments together. <laughs> Neil, you might want to get out of here. Can't should we all get out of here? Nah. <laughs> there ain't nowhere to go. <laughs> nah. <laughs> you stay right there, not cave you. <laughs> he closes a hand into a fist. And you can hear the audible popping noise that it makes. He puts his cigar out. He takes a deep, unnecessary breath and flies into a rage. (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) He has failed his self-control check. 
Weathers will be going on a 26 initiative. Healthy 22. Neil, how you doing? I go on 11. <laughs> I don't like that face. <laughs> okay, hold on. Yep. <laughs> oh, God. A fight breaks out. In an instant, Weathers is leveraging one of Kabir's arms, grasping in his hand, twisting him so he's bent down and essentially in a tight, perfectly executed grapple. And rather than holding him in a simple chicken wing, what have you, he shatters the arm completely, drives it into his rib cage, and Kabir lies on the ground as a torpid, broken husk. <laughs> Weathers doesn't growl, he doesn't roar, he doesn't demonstrate any of the usual signs of a vampire in frenzy. But as he stands up straight, looking for his next target, it is clear that he is in the midst of a frenzy. <laughs> Kabir has taken 18 levels of lethal damage. Oh, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. <laughs> lethal? Well, technically bashing, but then okay. it like, had rolled. Okay, yeah. so, okay, 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 okay. I was going to say, because I think that, I'm pretty sure he's gone, my man. <laughs> yeah. I don't think we survive 18 levels of lethal. Just get deleted. Not, 18 levels of bashing, we can, yeah. That, he's that a we can fucking do. pink mist at this point. That's still not good, but. <laughs> no, it's. No. Uh, he does not have any celerity actions, though. I have noticed, because he was going on a 26. Yeah. <laughs> Neither do I. Johnny is going to execute a uh, time-honored tradition with good old-fashioned full Nelson. That's what I like to hear. A healthy 15 dice pool. Seven successes to grab Weathers and put him into a lock. It feels like you are grappling a marble statue. <laughs> but for the moment... You have him. After he locks in, Johnny cannot help himself but give Weathers a little peck on the cheek. The crowd goes, oh! It's, it's unclear as to who they're upset for or panicking for, <laughs> but they know something just happened. I suspect she's been trying to get Britta to come outside for some fresh air, and about the time she's trying to get her to come out is when the sounds of utter war crimes being done to this Escalade. I kind of figure that at that prompt, Britta would have looked over to Miles and asked him, do you want to come out with us, or do you want to keep an eye on Eden? I'll keep an eye on Eden. I'll teach her a few more things. She's really enjoying dancing with you. She's, you're kind of helping us all keep in good spirits. Gotta take the wins we get. Britta well. offers a small smile to Miles, um, I think I'm the win you've got. She kind of finger guns at the two of them. Britta does give, like, the quiet kind of ugh laugh. We'll let you know what's going on outside. He starts dancing with Eden, shoes them off. <laughs> All right, he's... I'll text you. And Win and Britta make their way outside. Neil, first thing you courage check. Yeah. <laughs> No shit. What's the difficulty? Six. I got one success. All right. Hi. All right. My boy's in danger. I, I can stick it around. <laughs> Your uh, beast has strong feelings about you remaining here. Hey, Johnny, uh, great instincts, but I really think we should run, and I'm going to uh, vanish from the mind's eye on myself, Johnny, and Kabir, because I am worried that if Johnny lets him go, he'll just go and kill Kabir. So... That's what I'm going to do. Go for it. You guys who are coming out arrive just in time to see this. Free them vanishing? Yeah, you, oh. you see what what is happening now, and we'll see the vanish if it goes off. Another blood is spent up strength. As Britta's walking out with Wynn, she's taking her cell phone off of her thigh high and just using her chin to flip it open. She meant it when she said she's going to text smiles, but she kind of looks up from her phone screen and sees this. And her big eyes go wide, and she looks over to Wynn. Wynn had probably been kind of, like, holding Britta's hand as they came out, just to kind of, like, lead her through the crowd. Yeah, Britta would happily accept that help. And upon seeing this, the hand is, like, abruptly dropped. What's Weathers' wits plus alertness? Uh, nine. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Does my lurking spec count? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Lurk uh, away. Then I have... 
five successes. Uh, nice. Technically, that means we completely disappear. Yep. But I'm assuming he's got more willpower than five. He does. Anybody who doesn't and sees us disappear like that has to make a courage check or freak out, like mortals running away or whatever. Or like people who got their willpower uh, halved, right? Yes. <laughs> If you succeed, you're fine. If you fail, you gawk for two turns, trying to comprehend what the fuck just happened. Three successes. So you're good. Neil just says that to Johnny, and then disappears from sight. Kabir disappears from sight, and Johnny may or may Holds not. in a I mean, fucking yeah, I'd fucking lock. knew it, but like... <laughs> <laughs> I ain't going nowhere. At the end of the round. <laughs> Rob's like, fuck off. <laughs> I miss Ira. <laughs> a trio of three people come walking towards this ruckus. One of them has a fucking katana slung over his shoulder, and he goes, who's fucking with my ride? And you immediately recognize Rufio. And then, kind of like with with Johnny on his back, where there's turns, and it just <laughs> kind of jerks Johnny along for the ride, and the three of them turn around and continue walking as though they had never begun to interact with this fight (laughs) and head off to mind their own business. New round. I believe there is a contested grapple check that needs to happen. There is. I will spend blood to uh, get successes on my grapple, uh, my, my strength. Johnny has 11 successes to lock this grapple in. Weathers is on a 22 this round. Oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. If I intend to use a dot of celerity just to hold to dodge, do I need to spend blood for that? Yes, you do. All right, then I will be spending a blood. Uh, Weathers and Johnny are going on the same action, I think, right? Uh, Yes. So he's breaking, try, attempting to break with his? Yep. All right, so yeah, I've, I've got 11 successes to hold that grapple in. He has 13 to break free. And we go to um, Johnny, it's your turn. Johnny will will, will realize that he is not able to overpower the old man. So we'll try a different type of of grappling maneuver on him. So when he maneuvers Johnny off, the way he does it is it is a hard step back. And he slams your back against a car. Not enough. It doesn't hurt you, but it's enough to loosen your grip. And he slips out going wild. And now, what type of grapple maneuver do you use to try to get a hold of him? How does Johnny stay on the bull? Johnny uh, immediately gets popped off and like lets his arms go wide. And as uh, Weathers takes a step forward, Johnny kind of crouches down and springs forward, just sweeping out. It's trying to sweep out leather, uh, Weather's legs to hopefully bring it to the ground, and and, and hopefully he can he can establish a better grapple there. Whether he goes to the ground or not, who knows? Uh, seven successes to establish a grapple. So Johnny gets a hold of his legs and experiences a frightening sensation. As he realizes that Weathers is an immovable object. That motherfucking Weathers king of the hill is a king of the hill. This is not But you do have him door. grappled. All right. We go to... It's an anarch combi, my man. It is an anarch combi. <laughs> He's been hanging out with the Maya. Win. Win as fast as she can go, jumps into Weathers' eye line. This is probably a bad move on her part, but... One bad moves are kind of the only moves she's got. And she says, stop. I will make this right. I'm sorry you got involved in this shit. I will fix your car. Please stop killing people. Sorry, please stop hurting my guys. <laughs> my precious boys. <laughs> oh no, my sweet sons. <laughs> uh, and she will attempt to quell him. Or to give him the opportunity to come out of his frenzy. So when you look into his eyes. hmm You've quelled mortals, animals, and even kindred on numerous occasions in the past. Mm-hmm. But it's kind of like the past when you have worked to subdue Johnny's Beast, where 
when when these Bruja fly into a frenzy, it's like something took them away, mm-hmm. and they're gone, and all that's there is this unnatural engine of violence. Mm-hmm. So you have to steel yourself a little bit. Okay. You exert the willpower, and you make the attempt. You may rule for Quell the Beast. With three or more successes, the frenzying vampire may rule again to pull herself out of frenzy, using the same difficulty as the stimulus that caused the frenzy originally. Four successes. Whoo! <laughs> okay. Let's see if he exits frenzy. He remains in frenzy. Did I get the sense that it was just he's too far gone or I need to keep trying? That depends on how you wish to interpret it. As as I had said before, when trying to call the beast, Bruja have a very loose grip on their beast to begin with. So regaining control is that much harder for them. Mm-hmm. Essentially what's going on is you are causing him to make the self-control check to not frenzy, but because he's a Bruja, it's at plus two difficulty. Right. So he's just, he's failing the role. And he has a, a great self-control score. He's just yeah. a fucking Bruja. Yeah. Uh-huh. Have I made myself his new target? Um, no. He just looks down at Johnny and steam starts to rise from his fists. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> at this point, the crowd of Bruja starts moving in, uh, including Tiny. It's gotten a little too serious. We still gotta break a grapple. <laughs> yeah, it's not his turn, though. Uh, it is Britta's turn. So I have spent one point of celerity, so that should drop me to 15, which worked out regardless. Is texting an action or an item interaction? <laughs> How long is the message? I'm gonna give you a... Mm-hmm. If it is longer, it is an action. Yeah. I'm, I'm not gonna get it in time for whatever's happening out here. I, I... But there is more that I have on my mind, good okay. or bad. Um, so I... Unfortunately, I do have to commit the action, because then I'll text Smiles as fast as I possibly can, whether torporing Johnny and Kabir. And the second line is... Rufio and crew headed back inside. Eden, question mark. I'm Do it. gonna just send that off and flip the cell phone back close <laughs> and Turn get off. ready for the next moves. <laughs> okay, at this point, Tiny and a handful of the Bruja have burned for celerity and are rushing to get to Johnny and Weathers. Tiny calls out, Johnny, don't let go! <laughs> don't let go, Johnny! <laughs> Ooh, all right, let's do this. <laughs> I do like that, you know, for the longest time in this fucking city, like, everyone shits on Weathers, and then the one time Weathers loses his temper, everyone freaks the fuck oh out. All of those Bruja who thought they were hot shit and mouthed <laughs> off to him, they're quiet as fuck right now. They are desperately minding their own business. Johnny's gonna spend a willpower to hold on. Weathers has nine successes to break free. Well, I had nine successes to hold him and ten with the willpower. <laughs> you hold on. Are we in celerity actions right now? Yes. Okay, because before that... Oh. Uh, it's fine. I'm just invisibly dragging Kabir into the nearest alleyway because there's a shit ton of Bruja and he's invisible and in torpor and I don't want his ass to get like, I don't know, crushed under boots. So I will just be like invisibly grunting and pulling him into an alleyway just to get him out of the way. Okay. He attempts to break free again and this time the other Bruja are now arriving to back you up. I will not be spending willpower on this roll. Maybe I should. <laughs> Hey man, you might need those to not get killed. I think that's <laughs> what he's using. Nope, it for. I'm using I'm using willpower now to, to maintain this grapple. Because once the other Bruja show up, I'll have backup. But they're not here yet, so willpower being spent. Once again, I am at ten successes to maintain the grapple. Weathers has rolled fifteen successes. <laughs> <laughs> you wrestle back and forth, and he gets this grip on the back of your neck and tosses you over a car. As he does. <laughs> Oh, no. What did you do? (laughs) With one success, (laughs) Tiny gets a hold on him, and the other Bruja start piling on. They can't seem to wrestle him to the ground. (laughs) They can't seem to quite overpower him with the kind of confidence that you would expect a crew of Bruja to be able to do 
but we come to a new round. Celerity action. What'd you do? Action. I don't think Britta has an adequate physical follow-up to this situation, so I think instead for this moment, she was keeping the celerity ready in case she would need to spend the blood to dodge. I think she reevaluates and sends another text that says, NVM, maybe? Beat it has come on in the club. <laughs> 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 Round three. Are his fists still on fire? Or emitting steam? His body is radiating heat. Oh god, that's not helping. I think my initiative. Don't give gonna... me that look, you know what I'm about. I do. That's why I gave you the look. <gasps> I think my initiative goes back up to 16. Weather's initiative drops to a 20. Oh, no. (laughs) (laughs) Mine remains a hot 11. Johnny's thrown over the car, right? Yep. Yep. He uh, lands on his feet, sees that alley nearby, will take a uh, few bounding steps over there, followed up by a bounding leap, so he is out of view of just the regular street, on top of the building. And when he lands up there arms stretch out and says, let's go! Tim? Yeah. Erica? Rob? Mm Mm-hmm. Yes. Roll me eight dice each, and then add three automatic successes as the group of Bruja fight to maintain a hold on this guy. (laughs) Are they blowing tens? No. That's disappointing. Eight successes. Six successes. Three successes. <laughs> What'd you do? Lex, stop having him blow ten so much. <laughs> like he's shrugging off a coat. The bruja that were piling onto him are shoved off. And when he's done, he leaps up onto the roof in pursuit of Johnny. Oh no! <laughs> uh, that's him. So we will go... Britta and win. Britta and win. Wynn kind of very motivated to try and fix this shit, looks to Britta, a little wide-eyed, and says, can you call them back down here? Johnny or Weathers? Get Weathers, Johnny will follow. I hate you right now. Well, which is easier? I mean, Johnny's easier, but then I don't know if he'll have time to do his stuff. I I suspect one will follow the other. Use your discretion. I'll try Weathers. Okay. And Wynn will kind of position herself so that when Weathers, if Weathers gets down there, she is kind of a bulwark. Sounds good. Go ahead and roll for summon. I'll spend a willpower. Said difficulty seven? Yes. Six successes, including willpower. At five successes, subject rushes to the vampire doing anything to get to her. And you said you were holding to make the quell attempt when he re- returns? Yep. Britta closes her eyes just for one crystallizing moment of bravery before they snap back open. Neil, you arrived to the alley. All right, so I've, I've sort of gotten him out of the way here. Did I hear them, Britta and Wynn, talking about what they were doing? Yeah, I think you're perceptive. All right, to. then I am going to oh, have Tim against the wall turn back around and then i'm going to wait this could risk breaking my successes but i'm going to wait to try and hide them in case this fucks up real bad okay for the moment things go according to plan as weathers turns and leaps from the roof crashing down onto the ground in front of the two of you uh when and britta and he straightens his stature kind of looming over the both of you And before he starts unleashing his fury, he gives the pause to present himself as summon requires. And as he gives that pause and fulfills that obligation, Wynn steps in. I know it was shitty. I promise I'm going to make this better. I just need you to calm down. And I'm sorry, calm down has never worked in the history of being told to calm down, but... I'm doing my best, buddy. Please help me. Meet me halfway. Roll. Three successes. Uh, Four with the willpower. His jaw tenses. There's this pause that emanates from him as he examines his now ripped up coat. His chain snaps somewhere along the way. 
He bends down to pick it up. And without any fanfare or clever remarks, he simply walks away. It is a menacing aura that surrounds him as he does. The other Bruja that are present seem reticent to prevent Weathers from departing, and they simply let him go. Combat ends. Wynn isn't quite sure how to proceed from here, but she kind of lets out a breath she didn't realize she'd been holding. Britta next to her looks terrified, confused, and a little guilty, but she looks over to Wynn and tries to put a calming hand on her. She accepts it, kind of giving it a beat before she kind of puts her hand on top of Britta's. Okay, Johnny's on the roof. Where's... Where are Neil and Kabir? I have him right here. Jesus Christ, how many times am I going to end up punching you today? No, uh, Britta actually does jolt and slap at Neil. She was just narrated as terrified. She jolts and slaps at Neil. Uh, uh, yeah, I... Neil! Pr- probably deserve that. I Approach from the front, bud. It, in my experience, it doesn't really matter. I, I have Kabir here. He's, you know... Okay, but... You guys... From the alleyway here, a uh, thud as Johnny comes landing down in the alley. Another jolt. No slap this time. She's been primed. And he kind of walks over to the group and gives kind of like a sheepish look to all of you. You settled him down? Well, you riled it up. I only feel like it was right for me to settle him down. And she kind of walks off. You could have let me beat him. You could have let him beat me to death. That probably would have been the right thing to do. Yeah, since when do we do that? And she walks off to try and find Kabir. Your he's like, he's like, no, right Kabir. There. She's she's going to the alley where yeah, he he's, said he's that like he right is. behind Neil. Are you guys okay? I'm fine. Yeah, uh, I thought he was gonna come after me first, but he uh, he put Kabir on the ground. Kabir was the target, the the antagonist. He was the one who was spinning on his car, and like I know you were smashing it up, but I mean, that's how you want to look at it. Well. You got some red on you, by the way. Yeah, I know. I got nervous and I fucked up the spray can. Which explains, for those who have arrived outside, why half his face is red and his teeth are painted. Um, I got nervous. I didn't. This wasn't my. Neil, can you let me get that off you? Do you have. It's spray paint. I don't know how. I mean, yeah, if you've got a thing, that would be great. Well, can, can I use your. And Britta just kind of trails off, not entirely sure what to call your poncho. I mean, I guess it's already ruined. That's kind of my line of thought. And Neil looks pretty crestfallen at that realization. Um, Johnny, you're not now, obviously, but you're gonna have to come up. I mean, I think we're all gonna have to come up with some hell of an apology. Oh, for sure. What I just did to Weathers, uh, I'm gonna be repaying that with my fucking life at some point. Am I able to fix up Neil? Well, <laughs> um, in this moment or just like in general? <laughs> there isn't really fixing quote unquote Neil. Right? <laughs> but she met the paint. What if I roll for style? Go ahead and give me a style <laughs> roll. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You're going to be David <laughs> Bowie now. Um, watch me fail. <laughs> Please botch. This is going to be difficulty eight. That sounds right. I'm fucking spray Neil is myself in not the face. helping you. Yeah. <laughs> Neil's also probably a flincher when people try to touch his face. So what? Is... Neil's a flincher. End of sentence. Mm-hmm. Is this? Give me a manipulation style. Yeah, it's a botch. <laughs> <laughs> I have two ones and a bunch of fours and fives. Oh. Bring my eye. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just. You definitely poke him in the eye repeatedly. Okay, I'm gonna stop. And it gets to the point where his mouth is like this vampiric equivalent of shiny and chrome. (laughs) And he just has this disgusting, (laughs) dripping red grill. Britta, like, actually gets into the kind of upset where she, like, kind of can't stop trying after the first time she pokes him in the eye. And then, like, when she does it a couple more times, she, like, gets genuinely upset. And she kind of, like, backs away, like, dropping 
the cloak and says, No, I, I, I'm just making everything worse. I, I'm sorry. I, it's fine. Um, <clears throat> it's fine. Is this, um, and he looks over at Johnny. Do I still need to be here? Johnny, when Neil looks at you, it is unsettling. His eye looks like it's in really bad shape. There are red th- little thumbprints over his iris. Oh, he's got those, like, fucking corpse eye paint shit. Yeah. Ugh. What the hell did you do to him? I made it worse. I'm just making everything worse. I'm sorry. I thought I could fix it, but... Uh, I don't know if it's fixing you, Neil. You better just go. And I- I'll get you that number at some point. Yeah. Is it... Should I go? Make sure that when you see her, though, you I'm not uh, doing it tonight. Just, like, now I was gonna to your face. I, Fix that. I was, I was, gonna, I was hoping to talk to her tonight, but I, I think I might wait till a different night. Neil, if, are you you're gonna leave the rave, or yeah. oh, you can't, you can't leave the rave. I, what? I want to go are home. You, I'm sorry, but you're here till, till this thing's over. When is it over? Not yet. We're just gonna, like, leave Kabir on the ground there, and, like, I don't no, know. I'd probably put his body somewhere safe, but... I'm like, working on it! Eden's running around, and, like... It, <laughs> I'm sure she's with Miles, probably fine. Teflon Prince in the house! <laughs> 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 you know, I was having an okay night. <sighs> How? I mean, before the roof, and this, I mean... Um... You know, I'm, I might just try and go fix this in the bathroom for the next hour or so. Somebody wants to... I'm sorry. I... It's not your fault. It's my fault. It's my fault. And Neil just w- goes and, like, walks back into the rave to go find a bathroom and, like, I don't know, try and wash his face. Wash out his eyes. Fucking, I don't know. He doesn't know what he's doing. Neil slips off to the bathroom. When are you gonna put him... I guess Miles is... Sh- Trunk or I don't I don't even know. He just needs to heal. Do you have more of his chocolate things? I don't. Does he have any? I I will check. And she kinda like pats him down. Yeah, you find him. He's got some shit on him. Alright. She He also put- has like a lot of car keys. Yeah, I'm not surprised. <laughs> surprised he wasn't like jingling when Neil was dragging him off. He tends to jingle. But- yeah. When Puts the thing in her mouth and chews it up to a paste. And then she'll put her mouth to Kabir's and spit it in. He would. This is probably his goal the whole time. You slop this guck into his mouth. Mm-hmm. And slowly you <laughs> feel his hand reach up. His fingers thread into your hair. And the consumption of this nasty brown, what is now a like, thick slime devolves into a kiss. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. We need to have some big talks, buddy. All right, I'm just... You guys good? His arm is impaled on his rib cage, but I guess we'll get him fixed up. It's fine, and it happens all the time. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Okay, I'm trying to leave, so I can either try to help you can, get that Britta. arm out or... Britta, it's okay. Thank you for your help. Why don't you go see if... Miles and Eden are ready to go home. Britta doesn't seem like she's convinced that's really the next problem to handle, but she kind of looks despondently towards the ground and heads back into the wave. Thank you. Yeah. I'm pretty sure you saved my life back there, kid. I don't... I don't know. I you pr- Maybe you could have handled it. I'm sorry. I, I shouldn't have doubted what you were trying to do. I No, I'm being serious. He had me dead to rights in that roof. Thank you. I can't deal with the idea of losing you guys. When there's a flash of guilt on her face, but she tries to hide it. So, um, I, 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 guess, I guess you're, you're welcome. I, I'm glad you're okay. Please think about how to, um, I don't, I don't know. There's too many problems and um, I'm going to go inside. Britta just kind of ducks off. Wynne may have cut the kiss off with Kabir, but she still takes his hand. Probably the one that's still attached to him. Normal way. The other hand is inside him. Okay. So. I wasn't sure if it was in shoulder first or or hand first, so. Yeah, no, he plunged that thing into his ribcage. Mm-hmm. Kind of like, like a steak. 
Yeah, like like he he broke his arm, mm-hmm. and then through his back smashed his like r- all the way down to like his wrist into mm-hmm. the guy's body. Yeah, I'm gonna assume you can't walk. <laughs> I would just need a few minutes, and I will walk. Just check your phone next time, dumbass. Princess, uh, I have lost much, and I am not a man who likes to lose. It is... um, It is in the nature of Ravnos to behave certain ways. Aspects of themselves that they cannot escape. To me, it indicates you don't trust me. My flaws existed before you. And I regret to say, nothing can change that part of me. Risk, competition, territorial behavior. They are my vice. I am sorry I have dragged you into this. Do you see me running away? I see your frustration. Well, I'm glad, because I didn't think I was being terribly subtle about it. It is not an excuse. But I will not excuse who I am. I am sorry if this creates a rift. It creates a discussion. That's all. You guys, the heavy conversation is interrupted by the sound of a Zippo clacking out and in as Johnny lights up a Morley. Why are you still here, Jesus? Because <laughs> this is my rave. And so you're gonna just peeping Tom on us while we're having a couple's moment? You really have nothing better to do at your rave. Ah, it is one of those moments. Yeah, shut up. <laughs> well, I was standing here when you two kids started getting googly-eyed at each other. I'll let you be for the time going. Um... Uh, Go dance with Miles. If you gotta take him somewhere, please do. Uh, Kabir, I love you to death, my friend. If I see you anywhere near this fucking rave after this, I am personally going to rip your fangs out of your skull after this shit. Don't forget who's got your back. And then Johnny turns around and starts heading back to the rave. There's this nod of like a, like a yup, yup kind of expression from him. Let me know when you can stand and we'll... Find somewhere for you to be. There is a wet, sucking, popping noise that starts to come from him as the blood begins to mend Kabir. It, she's probably heard him make worse noises. Likely. Once he has two hands, both outside of his body, he stands up straight. She'll help him stand up. I'm not going to apologize or excuse who I am either. I was going to fuck him up with illusions. Yeah, I know. Thank you for not doing that. Because it Mm. fucking sucks. He looks like he wants to say next time, but doesn't. We're growing up. What a beautiful moment. She doesn't say that out loud. She definitely thinks it. (laughs) (laughs) Where do you want to go? Kind of... Allegedly, we're not allowed to leave the rave, but I think we, wherever we go, we take the rave with us. Kind of points in... One direction, and then kind of changes his mind and points in another direction. And eventually he's like, that way. And he just kind of fucking points in a direction. What's in that direction? South. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Is like, (laughs) is there a place I know he likes in that direction? Is there like a woods in that direction? He pretty randomly picked a direction. Okay. He seems more interested in the journey than actually getting somewhere. And she'll start walking with him. Okay. Neil, when you make it to the bathroom, you feel this bad feeling and realize that you are the only person in the meds room. Probably because the vast majority of people here are vampires, but usually there's someone fucking around in the bathroom. And it's as you look in the mirror... And see how absolutely fucked up your eye is that you see him. And with this, like, chain clenched in his undead fist, a bald man with pointed ears, a trench coat, and those kind of buck 
two pointed fangs in his mouth. The scourge lunges for you from nowhere. Where's Fester? All right, Rob, I'm going to need a quick initiative roll. I rolled a nine for a total of 14. Renwick will be going on a 22. Renwick takes this chain and goes to wrap it around your neck and drag you to the floor. Okay. He has eight successes to initiate a grapple. Jesus. (laughs) Yeah. uh, What does Neil do? (laughs) Neil strangles out a cry as the... the, uh, chain wraps around his neck. I don't know. I don't know where he is. I, I, I'm i trying. I, I want to find him. He turns and pulls you over his hip, dropping you to the ground. And with a knee to your back, he asks again, Neil, you're going to tell me where he is. I know who you're working with. I know what you did to him. My friend. I don't I don't understand. What, what do you mean? You burned him. I, I didn't mean that. I didn't want to. I, I wasn't in control of my actions. Bullshit, Neil. I wasn't. He's my friend. I care about him. I would have found him already, but I don't have any of his things, and I, I didn't want to... I can't... It's hard to talk. Then struggle. Uh, Neil just sort of flops around struggling. Renwick has fucking potence and shit, right? Like, he is... Sure does. Yeah. I'm not really going anywhere, but, like, Neil's legs are kicking and just, like, trying to struggle out. Very, uh quick while moving hunched over and dragging you in the way that like a tarantula does he pulls you into a bathroom stall closes it locks it and jacks you against the wall what do you mean you need something of his to find him is the chain still around my neck yes hey hey, fester never really wanted me to have like a picture or see his real face and i never looked because it felt rude but if I had a picture or, like, something that really meant something to him, I could find him, no matter where he is, so long as he's still alive. Hmm. He kind of starts to loosen his grip on you. Uh, despite not needing to breathe, Neil sort of reflexively coughs a little bit when the chain, the pressure from the chain is released a, even a little bit off his throat. <laughs> How could you betray him like that? My, my sire got in my head. Uh, he made me do it. He, yes, I, he, he. What does he have to do with this? He's somewhere here. He found me, and he he put an idea in my head. He he, I. It wasn't until after it happened I knew anything happened at all. Your sire is in cahoots with Vital. What? N- no, he's he wants me to. Vital is the one who's gotten his hands on our friend. On my friend. What, what does Marcus Vitel have to do with anything? I don't know, Neil. You're the one that's supposed to explain that. I have no idea. I don't, I've never even met Marcus Vitel. That seems unlikely. I, I, Everyone I, knows that Marcus Vitel interacts with your own quarter frequently. I just got back into town, like, not that long ago. Like a few days, maybe? How many nights would you need? Well, to meet someone, to technically, technically one. How often have you interacted with your own quarterly? I mean, a, a bunch. Or I, yes, what, frequently, haven't you? What, Miles, all I know about My, Marcus Vitel is Miles wanted me to watch him because he doesn't trust him. And what did you find out about him? I haven't had a chance yet. We've been into the rain. Tell me what you found out about I him. I don't know anything yet. I haven't had a chance. I was waiting until we called court next so I could, you know, look after him, like watch him. But we haven't done that yet because this. And he's like his little arms flail around, kind of like gesturing towards the door, back out towards the thumping music. You're going to take this. You're going to find Fester. And he's not going to suffer anymore because of you. I don't want him to. He's my friend. Well, your Molotov cocktail said otherwise. A thing that I wish more than anything didn't happen. Perhaps not as much as he does. Probably not, no. He takes out a... Deep red lipstick. And more of like a punch than a shove. He presses the lipstick into your stomach, like shoving it into your possession. I, I can... Track faster. I can do it right now. Well, uh, do it right now, then. Do me a favor and, and block the door. I'm not doing shit for you, Neil. So that we're not interrupted, because it's going to take me a couple of minutes. I want to find him as much as you do. 
Okay? Then act now. Fine. Fine. Just give me a minute. Um, Neil takes the lipstick. Uh, and this is very, like, I know Fester very well. This is his, this is very particular, not just like an object in his haven. This is very particular to him, right? That is Fester's favorite lipstick. So, Lex, am I correct? And this would be enough of a sympathetic link to use seeing with the sky's eyes to locate him anywhere on Earth if I perform the ritual? It would work, yes. Okay. Does he let me go at all? Does uh, Renwick let me go, or is he still like crammed into this stall with me? He's like he has let go of you, but is <laughs> looming with the intentions of like extreme violence in the event you do anything surprising. Neil, now that he's not being physically held, sits on the toilet seat and using the lipstick starts actually using it to write symbols and things on the walls and over his eyelids. And will, over the course of a little bit of time here, which is like 20 minutes or more, slowly and ritualistically commune with the heavens and gain the precise location of Fester. You become aware of a townhouse in New Haven, old Victorian style, and you know that there is a contraption that was designed, like some sort of holding pen you are stricken with a barrage of insights and what you see is that set into the floorboard right by the fireplace is this metal container and the floorboard has slots that can be removed that reveals this like pitted metal surface fester is caged in it as you can see the footfalls of expensive shoes walking over him like he is this animal. But you know the address. You know the contraption. You even know which floorboards conceal access to it. Neil comes back to his own present awareness with a gasp. Uh, not 100% clear what the timeline is and with like no guile on his face at all looking directly up at uh, at Renwick desperately like like he's clawing his way back to consciousness almost and goes he has him he's he's got he's got fester he's i i know where he is he's he's got him in he's caged him in some sort of contraption beneath his floorboards he's he's i know the address i know where he is he's got him we we have to do something we have to help him now, d d soon. I don't even know when dawn is. We, we have to go. We he needs he needs help. He frowns, kind of trying to read whether or not he can actually trust you or anything you're saying, and he seems to settle on a choice. Roll soak. Botch. I don't even know what happens if you botch a soak. I don't even know if you can, but I did. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I Cannot botch a soak. Okay, okay. we'll have no successes. <laughs> but a wooden stake is driven through your heart. His hands brush over your eyelids, and he closes your eyes. And together, you two disappear. Path of Night is a Vampire the Masquerade podcast set in the world of darkness. Britta Ashcroft, the Torridor, was played by Rebecca Segelfess. Johnny Saxon, the Bruja, was played by Garrett Gabby. Miles Davenport, the Venture, was played by Tim Davis. Neil Foster, the Malkavian, was played by Rob Muirhead. Wynn Cabot, the Gangrel, was played by Erica Webb. Your storyteller was Lex Lopez. Recording by Rebecca Segelfess. This episode edited by Rob Muirhead. The music used in this episode was composed for Path of Night by Brian Metolius. Find him online at brianmetolius.com. Path of Night uses the 20th anniversary edition of Vampire the Masquerade with a few limited house rules. Vampire the Masquerade and the World of Darkness are owned by Paradox Interactive. Make sure to subscribe to us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. We can be found on YouTube at youtube.com slash at Path of Night. You can help support the show on coffee.com slash Path of Night. Find us on twitter.com slash Path of Night pod, on facebook.com slash Path of Night podcasts, or email us at Path of Night podcasts at gmail.com. See you next time, Kindred.
Can you describe the action before you roll? Can you roll dice for it? I don't know if he can. I get that. Oh, right. Jesus. <laughs> nah. 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 The title of this episode is Nah. Nah. I'm down for that. <laughs> I guess technically roll soak. Well, I'm going to roll dodge because I want to reduce the number oh, no, of no. The dice rolling it's over. Not you. Not oh, for you. Uh, <laughs> oh, God. This, this might splatter the Ravnos. He's, not really He's got bad. fortitude as well. That's in clan. I rolled it. Okay, okay. I, I rolled it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just, just that desperate, like, don't forget. <sighs> okay. 